there a place that you like to, you know, like walk around just to like, you know, take in the sights? That's a great question. I mean, we walked around a college once and that was honestly a lovely time. Emily, when I came up with this question, that's literally the first thing I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a great, you were like, this has been the best experience of my life. Let's do this every day from now on. And I said, hard pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really <laughs> kind of amazing that we've stayed friends, you know, when you let me down so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to walk where there's like more nature, you know? A uh, You're a uh, nature versus nurture kind of gal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I guess in that respect, that is the line I drew, huh? <laughs> Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Kyle Imperator and Emily Moyers take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Hey everybody! Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. I'm Emily Moyers, and I'm Kyle Imperator. Kyle, I understand that you have you have planted a seed in the ground and grown a word for me. I have Emily. It's a beautiful word, but it's my first word. So <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't win the blue ribbon at the fair, don't judge. All right, all right. Are you ready? I'm so ready. The word is diesel, D-E-A-S-I-L, diesel. Wow. Diesel, D-E-A-S-I-L is crazy. D-E-A-S-I-L, diesel. I feel like I can, looking at it, I feel like I can deduce literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the language of origin? The language of origin is, well, it's got a couple, but... We'll go back as far as we can. Old Irish. Old Irish. It's like a Celtic word. Yeah. Dazel. <laughs> that just sounds like maybe a medication that you take that's non-drowsy. <laughs> Dazel. <laughs> Dazel. <laughs> as opposed to nisel. <laughs> yeah. And and part of speech, I, I guess, noun it's or adjective? Hmm. No, not adjective. It's I don't most, like that you can't tell. It's, I know. And that's why I like this word, Emily. <laughs> Literally, as I was doing it, I was like, ooh, this is going to be a part that screws her up. <laughs> it's most often used as an adverb, although it can be used as a noun and sometimes as an interjection. Oh, I hate <laughs> all of those answers. I know. An adverb... So you you do something, Dazel? Diesel. Diesel, yes. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I do Dazel to do something, Diesel. Oh. That's the medication that we came up with oh, before, I see, I see, Emily. I see. You do something, Diesel. Yeah. But you could also just say, Diesel. Yep. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a wild guess, and then I'm going to ask for a clue. Okay. It means... Adverb is crazy. It means with longing. Aw. No. Give me a clue. But beautiful. I hate Emily, this. <laughs> Emily, your clue is TikTok. Whoa. Oh. Is it like briefly? No, it isn't. Okay. And you're not even close, but. Then I'll give up. I, I, I like how you took the clue, you know? <laughs> I, my immediate thought was daily, and then I was like, no, that's that's other things that expire after a day. TikTok doesn't. But I don't know, Kyle. What does this word mean? I feel so a C. You are a C, and I'm going to uh, ground you now. I'm going to land you. I'm going to beach you. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, diesel means clockwise, right-handwise, <gasps> or sunwise. Oh, my gosh. And you, <laughs> you said TikTok because it's clockwise. Kyle, clockwise, you're a criminal. Yeah. I know I am. 
<laughs> You're an absolute criminal. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a criminal. Who, who can? Yeah, I'm a smooth criminal, you know. <laughs> and then, as a noun, it can mean clockwise motion or a turning to the right. Wow. But as yeah. an interjection? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Wow. I'm very confused, Kyle. Please tell me so much more. So diesel comes from the Scottish Gaelic adjective and adverb dieshil or dieshil, meaning southward, sunward, or clockwise. But it could also mean lucky. Oh, that Scottish a Gaelic word comes from the Old Irish word diesel, which means oh. sunwise or lucky, favorable, or propitious. By sunwise, are we just saying like towards the sun? Sunwise in this instance means in the direction that the like the sun, the that same the sun. direction that the sun moves. Oh, I see. Like east to west. Yes, exactly. Got you. So diesel comes from two old Irish roots. One is dies, D-E-S-S, which means right or south. And the other is shell, S-E-L, which means turn. Although the Century Dictionary also suggested that the suffix might have come from the old Irish yall or yule, which means direction or guidance, which seems, you know, feasible to... Sure. considering the whole word but diesel emily is basically a synonym for the more english rooted words sunwise sunways or sunward which are words that you very rarely have to use in yeah. modern life right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i thought you were gonna start listing off like common words <laughs> and i no. was like nope not at all <laughs> so if you live in the northern hemisphere as we yeah. do and as the gales that originated this term did, yeah. you will notice, as you said before, Emily, what is the direction of the sun? It's east to west, but it's in the southern part of the sky because we're in the northern part of the earth. You, you are the best, Emily. That's exactly <gasps> what I was looking for. Exactly. Thank you. So it rises in the east, it arcs a path through the southern sky, and then sets in the west, right? Yeah. So... With the invention of the sundial, these directions were reversed, but the path still stayed the same. Does that make sense? Right. So the the sun was starting in the eastern part of the sky. The shadow would be in the western part of the sundial. Exactly. But it would still move across through the day. Yes. Yeah. The shadow would cast on the wedge shape on the top of the dial, which is called a gnomon, G-N-O-M-O-N. And it would move from west to north to east, but in the same direction, right? Right. So we believe that clockmakers built their wares to mimic these sundials in the northern hemisphere. And so diesel <gasps> became the standard for clockwise motion. Wow. So that's why clockwise is clockwise. Because it's the same direction because that the sun moves. Because it's west to north to east. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? That <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> But like, it makes so much sense. That's so fun, Kyle. That's the most fun thing I've heard this week. <laughs> I'm so glad I could. That is the <laughs> smallest part of this episode, Emily. <laughs> oh, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> that is just the surface. Oh my God. Diesel is so much more than that, Emily. It was also key to Gaelic circumambulatory rituals. Emily, can oh. you guess what circumambulation is? Moving in a circle? Like circum being circular and ambulate meaning like movement or walking? A walking, yeah, you got it. Yeah. So circumambulation is the act of walking around something, especially for ritual purposes. And gotcha. you got it exactly. It comes from the Latin kirkum, which means around, and ambulo, which means I walk. Wow. So for the Gaelic Druids of Ireland and Scotland, diesel was the Celtic pagan custom of walking sunwise around something to induce good fortune as a form of sun worship. So for example, at a wedding, the bride would be conducted to her future spouse in the direction <gasps> of the sun. So she would be brought to him from the east she would be walked around south and then to the west side of him. And the wedding company might then walk the diesel 
around the church after the end of the ceremony with the church on their right hand side. This would often be done three times. They would make a circle three times in these rituals. Wow. As like a form of like, you know, we wish you luck or, you know, we're hoping that the gods bring us luck. And and to symbolize it, we're going to we're going to do three three days around you. Three Three whole sun (laughs) cycles. Yeah. (laughs) So the same would occur at funerals. They would, you know, walk three times around the church at funerals and pallbearers would make the diesel around the grave as the dead were being laid to rest. Sure. So the connection between diesel and luck even extended to smaller gestures, like when someone sneezed or drank water the wrong way. (gasps) You'd say diesel? Yeah. So according to the 1794 Statistical Accounts of Scotland, the superstition became so commonplace that if a person's meat or drink were to affect the windpipe or come against his breath, they instantly cry out, Jeshul, which is an ejaculation praying that it may go the right way. Wow. Oh, that it goes sunwards. (laughs) Yeah, that it goes sunwards. Exactly. (laughs) Wow. Adorable. (laughs) Isn't that great? And that's what I'm going to say from now on. I like that better. No reason not to. Truly. (laughs) (laughs) When Christianity eventually spread through the Gaelic lands, these Celtic pagan rituals then grafted neatly onto Christian traditions. As they did with a lot of things, yeah. As they did with a lot of things, yeah. Or sometimes messily onto Christian traditions. (laughs) Yeah. But in her 1920 hagiography (gasps) of the Irish Saint Columba, who is a saint who is credited for bringing Christianity to Scotland, the author author Lucy Mingus says, The diesel superstition has come down to us a daily one. We see it in the practice of passing the wine round the table in the direction of the sun, or in the fears of the cook that her pudding will be spoiled if someone stirs it the wrong way. Wow. Now I'm going to be scared when I stir anything. (laughs) (laughs) Counterclockwise, right? Yeah. Can you think of other things? Like, I've been trying to think of other things that we do clockwise. I mean, I feel like I do things clockwise just yeah. as like a, an OCD behavior. Yeah, the neuroses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In my head, the first thing that I thought of was poker, right? When you're oh, like sure. hand- giving cards out, it always goes clockwise. Yeah. Well, any kind of like board or table game, I feel like yeah. it's typical to go yeah. clockwise around the table. I think we just like uniformity, you know? So we're like, the clock goes this way. So sure. we got to go this way. <laughs> I mean, that's why the clock goes that way is because the sun goes that way. So the sun goes that way. <laughs> like we got to have uniformity here. Yeah. Do you think in like Australia, everything is counterclockwise? So it's really funny. Yeah. Like in the Southern Hemisphere, like the sun goes a different way. So it turns out that there was a push at some point for clockmakers in Australia <gasps> to try and have the clocks go in the other direction. It's so funny. <laughs> and and in like South America, in places yeah. in South America. So there are some like public clocks in like public squares in the Southern Hemisphere go that have counterclockwise clocks because they were like, you know, we don't want the Northern Hemisphere to be dictating the way we do things. <laughs> Hilarious. But you wouldn't yeah. say you wouldn't say counterclockwise clocks because the way that the clock is going is clockwise. Right. <laughs> right. I guess it would be counter sunwise, but even then it'd be sunwise for them. It's sunwise right? to them. Kyle, you got to get out of this Northern Hemisphere centric <laughs> mindset. All right. You're being oh, well, really <laughs> hemis- <laughs> hemisist. Yeah, <I'm- laughs> You know what? I think because the northern hemisphere is like 70% of the earth anyway, like (laughs) we're just better. We're just the center of everything. Or the top. The top. We're out on top. Emily, speaking of us having trouble over the terminology for clockwise and counterclockwise regarding the hemispheres, you must be asking yourself at this point the Irish and the Scottish must have had a word for counterclockwise if they had a word for clockwise, right? Honestly, that was like my first question when you defined diesel. I was like, there's got to be an antonym for this word. So the Irish used the word tuahal for <gasps> counterclockwise. And that comes from the old Irish word tuath, which means left or north, which are obviously the opposite of right and south, right? Yeah. Where the sun goes. But the Scots, though, they ended up getting their inspiration from a different source. <laughs> I don't like that I can hear your little stinker smile. (laughs) So their word, which also came to English, is widdershins. 
<gasps> I've heard this word. Why have, have I heard you? this word? <laughs> Where have I heard this word? I know the word Wittershins. I have no idea what it means, but I've definitely heard it and I'm freaking out. Well, you know what it means, Emily. It means counterclockwise. It means counterclockwise. Yeah. But why have I heard that? <laughs> so Wittershins, also sometimes Withershins, you know, <laughs> Reese Witherspoon's uh, <laughs> nemesis. Reese or, just, or just the bottom half of her legs. <laughs> yeah, Reese Witherspoon's. <laughs> so Wittershins means counterclockwise, but it also means the opposite or wrong direction. Right. And by extension, it means unlucky, ill-fated, or occult. I feel like I'm immediately wanting to use it to mean like golly wopsis or like out of whack, you know? So like, oh, it's all, it's uh, yeah. all Wittershins. It's all askew. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it sounds like a word to use like that, right? Yeah. So Wittershins is a borrowing of the middle low German, bear with me on this. Okay. Wedersins, which comes from the middle high German, Wittersinus. Would the W's be pronounced like V? So I was trying to find like <laughs> pronunciation guides for middle low German and middle high German. I think back when German was closer to English and because mm-hmm. middle middle low German is also called low Saxon, right? Right. I think the W letter was somewhere between W and V. The way that it was described uh, that I saw is saying W, but as if you're with like a V-shaped mouth. So using your front teeth on your lips. Interesting. I, I don't know if that's true or not, because there's little on the internet about it, but right. we'll keep looking into it. All right. I'm fascinated. That middle high German word, Widdesinus, <laughs> uh, is a combination of two words, Widde, which means against, and Sinnen, which means to travel. So it literally means traveling against, right? To go like the opposite way. against the grain, yeah. Exactly. So Widdershins was originally used just to mean an opposite direction. For some reason, it was often used to describe like the feeling of goosebumps. Oh, I could see that. Right? Uh, like, like, the, like, you know, something feels wrong, so all your hairs stand up? That's literally the context, Emily. There are five quotes in the OED for Wittershins in that with, with hair standing up on its end. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. <laughs> and here's one of them, in case you want to hear it. Please. So this one is from George Sinclair's 1685, Satan's Invisible <gasps> World Discovered. <laughs> oh, so dramatic. <laughs> and in it, a man named James Fleming is literally trying to keep a woman from being swept up by the winds of the devil. Oh, my God. <laughs> and to do so, he held her by both arms and betouched himself strongly and earnestly to God, though with great amazement, his hair standing widdershins in his head. In his head? In his head, yeah. Weird weird you know it was 1685 but a lot yeah. of them are like yeah his hair like their hair stood widdershins you know yeah which is just a fun saying you know it is it's really yeah. good but at some point widdershins became the antonym to diesel meaning to walk around in the wrong direction thus bringing bad luck or perhaps conjuring evil spirits Whoa. so emily a prominent example of Widdershin's activity <laughs> is exemplified in the North Berwick Witch Trials, the first major witch prosecutions in Scotland. Have you wow. ever heard of them? Never in my life. Well. I mean, I was in them. I was accused. <laughs> but other than that. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of put it out of my memory. It was you know? all, you know, it was so long ago. <laughs> they scalped me and put me in an Iron Maiden. And- Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on here. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. They're witch trials. (laughs) Yeah, it was not good stuff. So in 1589, Princess Anne of Denmark departed for Scotland to marry King James VI. Oh, yeah, the audience already knows all this guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Skip ahead. (laughs) Her journey was beset by storms, causing the ship to eventually sink. So she landed in Norway, and the king met her there for the wedding, uh, though their return trip back to Scotland was also filled with terrible storms. Both Denmark and Scotland were like, 
I mean, that's got to be witches, right? <laughs> it, I, it's always got to be witches. There has to be someone to blame, and it has to be a woman. <laughs> uh, some men were killed in this too, Emily. John, oh, jeez. Wow. <laughs> Hashtag not all men. Not all men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Denmark and Scotland both held trials in 1590 to take care of business, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The North Berwick trials in Scotland ran for two years. Wow. And implicated over 70 people, including Jeez. the respected elderly healer Agnes Sampson. <gasps> Not Agnes Sampson. Who was theretofore known as the wise wife of Keith. But they they believed to her to be the elder witch, so they said she ain't no wise wife anymore. Keith Sampson is such a normal ass name. <laughs> Emily, here's the thing: I thought her Keith. husband's name was Keith as well. She doesn't have a husband; she was single. Oh, is it wife as in whiff as in woman? Yep, and Keith is the county she lived in. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I guess she was so wise. They were like, wait a second. Something's up here. She's too wise. <laughs> she can't possibly be smart of her own yeah. accord. Yeah. There has to be Satan involved. <laughs> there has to be Satan. Oh my God. There's so many things about Satan I can't talk about in this episode. Some other day. Because you'll, you'll be cursed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eyes will roll back in my head. So witches, Emily, were thought to dance widdershins as a part of their <gasps> malevolent rituals. You know, dance yeah. in dance counterclockwise, counterclockwise circles. Counterclockwise, sure. And after being tortured, she eventually confessed to doing just that, to dancing widdershins with about 200 other witches on All Hallows' Eve. And she said that she danced to a song and dance that is now known as The Witches Reel. I thought you were going to say the witch's Wittershins, which would be great. Yeah. Well, uh, Wittershins is a part of the reel. Do you, would you like to hear a little, like a verse from the witch's reel? I can't sing it because I don't know what the melody is, but I can read it to you. <laughs> yeah, could you do it? Is it like is it like the cha-cha slide where it's like instructions? Yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to like sing up a background track for me and I'll play some instruments? Get your like banjo lin out for me and... Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. I'll just, I'll just read it to you then. So this is the second verse of the witch's reel. It goes, Comer go ye before, comer go ye. If ye will na go before, comer let me. Ring a ring a witter shins, lopen lightly witter shins, kilted coats and fleeing hair, three times three. I mean, the beginning of it sounded like the Cotton Eye Joe, so yeah, I can yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. see why this song was, like, <laughs> hella popular at all the parties. Uh, well, it wasn't... I don't know if it was popular. I think it was infamous, because it was well, literally... popular at witch parties, which are the best parties. parties. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was literally in, like, the news... Like, Agnes said, yeah, this is the song that we sang. And they put it in, like, the trial records. And then, you know, then it was, it hit the, once once the news was out, then it hit the Billboard Hot 200. Yeah, yeah, it was right underneath um, Numa Numa. <laughs> That's what the song Which is turns called. Out to it's called Numa also, Numa. <laughs> also uh, a song used for witchcraft. Yeah, the guy was pumping his arms, Wittershins, in the <laughs> Wittershins, video. Wittershins, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case you're curious, Emily, comer in that song is a Scottish word that means lass or female companion. Oh, I, um, I'm not going to say anything about that, Kyle. Only that I now have a word that I hate. So, Seth, you'll be <laughs> glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, James VI of Scotland, who was the king who... <laughs> presided over these trials and was privy to all of the goings-ons here. A swell guy, for sure. <laughs> he, at first, was not convinced. But, like, through the trials and through all of the people, like, uh, Emily is crazy stuff. <laughs> he was like, oh, Agnes supposedly, I was either Agnes or another witch, supposedly word for word recited his wedding vows to his <laughs> face. And he's like, she wasn't there. How the heck did she know that? Wow, she must be a witch. <laughs> so he was like eventually thoroughly convinced by these ordeals that 
the witchcraft was real. And he eventually published a dissertation on Widdershin's witchcraft in 1597 entitled Demonology. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, that sounds like a thing I want to have. Uh, so when James ascended to the British throne as James I in 1603, he brought with him his fear of witchcraft and the witch trials in England like blew up. It became this huge panic in England. And he at the same time had demonology republished together with the accounts of the trials, which were entitled separately News from Scotland. Okay? Okay. I tell you these things, Emily. I tell you these I things. I tell you these things. <laughs> I tell you these things because it is believed that this publication was one of the main sources of information for Shakespeare's Macbeth, published just three years later. Wow. Because the dialogue and actions of the weird sisters, who are basically witches, seem to come directly from King James's works. That. It makes a bunch of sense. Right? And yeah. because the play is in Scotland, like so much of it is yes. like, wow, this is about the Scottish witch trials. And it was written to please King James because like he was a new king on the throne and he had come from Scotland and there was like some backlash about him taking the throne. So Shakespeare was like, I'll write a play about why it's a really bad thing to kill a king and wow. then he'll like me. <laughs> Emily, that is incredible. Wow, I didn't even realize that. That is yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. And and because like throughout the trials, they found like more and more witches confessed to different ways that they were trying to kill him, you know, whether or not that was yeah. true. But there was one they were like, oh, we threw a cat in the river and, you know, it was a cursed cat and we were trying to kill you, you know? So yeah. that <laughs> makes so much sense, Yeah, Emily. yeah. King James was very worried about assassination. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Shakespeare and wrote a play- discouraging it <laughs> yeah so there you go yeah. thus macbeth possibly because of its talk of witchcraft has since developed its own superstition right yeah You're familiar you can't with say this, macbeth right? in, on, in a theater right? yeah it's it's called the scottish curse sometimes and yeah. it's basically bad luck for an actor to say the name of the show they usually say instead the scottish play right, right. but you're allowed to say the character's name right you just can't say the play i there's different rules you know it's like oh if you're acting in the show you're allowed to say the name or, right if you're in you know, character right exactly uh, but emily do you happen to know what one of the cleansing rituals that ha has been observed by actors who mistakenly say Macbeth in a theater. Do you, do you know what one of those rituals perchance may be? Oh, do you walk clockwise or turn clockwise? It's actually walking Widdershins three <gasps> times. Oh. But I feel like walking Diesel probably would be more effective, That's right? That's supposed to be the lucky thing. Yeah. yeah. I just missed the boat, those actors. They're just making it worse, walking Widdershins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Emily, that is that is Diesel in a nutshell. Kyle, Diesel and Wittershins are both such good words, and I love oh, everything that you just said about them. Oh, they're really, uh, there's so many good facts in there, Kyle. Thank you. I know you Man. walk around in circles just in your daily life, so you can <laughs> now you can name which way you're it going. It feels you know? like it. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, Emily, we're at that point that we all wait for. Uh, yeah. Can you use Diesel in a sentence? Perhaps in tangent, in tangent, in what? Perpetuity. Perhaps with Widdershins. <laughs> <laughs> tandem is the word I was looking for. In tandem. Got it. Wow. You've thrown me a double challenge here. It's, it's just, I always feel like it topic wise, it's got to, you know, be significant. All right. I was having... A uh, just a just a horrible, unlucky Wittershins day, and I realized it was because when I made tea that morning, I didn't stir it. Diesel, beautiful, perfect, <laughs> lovely, and now I'm gonna have to think about that. Possibly why I've had some Wittershins days. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do everything, Diesel. Got to do everything, Diesel. Yeah, Ellie, are you ready for the game? Let's play a game. Let's play a game. Emily, 
You know how this game works. It's called I Here Here. It. I knew it. I knew it from the moment you said Diesel. I said, we're going to get to play Here Here. <laughs> You might need to explain this game, though, because it's been a while yeah. since we've played it. <laughs> it has been a while since we played it. The game's all based on homophones, and I basically explain it with an example. So if I say a can of gasoline spun clockwise, you would respond with a diesel diesel. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I've got four short ones. I think they're going to be fun. Nice. Okay? Your first one is renter gossip. Renter gossip. Wow. You've stumped me on question one, Kyle. No, no, no. You can get it. What are some types of gossip? Some words for gossip. That's the angle to go for? Yeah. I'm trying to think. I I can't think of any other synonyms for gossip. What's a piece of gossip called? Heard it through the grapevine, possibly. Oh, a rumor rumor? Yeah, rumor rumor. You got it. Wow. (laughs) Rumor is a weird one. (laughs) For, for yeah, someone like a tenant. <laughs> yeah, someone who rooms something is a rumor. Sure. Okay, uh, your next one is motionless envelopes. Oh, wow. Boy, I listen, I want everyone to know that in yeah. previous games of Here Here, I've done really well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is like the third, if the fourth-ish time that we're playing, so I figured I'd I'd up it, you know? Yeah, and and I wasn't ready for level two, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> you said motionless envelopes. Yeah, or paper, you know, something that might go stationary, in Stationary, stationary. You got Thank it, you. Emily, yep, you got yep, it. Yep. Okay, your next one is how one might colloquially tell another of an unavailable skill. The important part is unavailable skill. This one's hard. Yeah. So this is like a statement that you would say? Yeah. You might put it in quotes, I guess. It's a little forced, but it's there. Uh, tell me, Kyle, because I've got no clue. It's know-how, know-how. Mm, <laughs> it's yeah. a hard one. It is. It's a, it's it's a stretch. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real stretch. <laughs> but good. Okay, this last one's a threefer. I always like to end with a threefer. Yeah. A donkey that lives in tunnels, perhaps maybe in Staten Island or the Bronx. Oh. 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 A burrow, burrow, burrow. Yeah, burrow, burrow, burrow. <laughs> <laughs> really good. You got it, Emily. <laughs> Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, that's the game, Emily. That's God. it. Another rousing round of Here, Here. Gotta love Here, Here. It's Gotta the best it. thing we've ever done. Yeah. Kyle, this was a fantabulous episode. Thank you so much, Emily. And everyone else besides Kyle, remember that you can find Butter No Parsnips on social media, on Facebook and on Instagram at Butter No Parsnips Podcast, and on TikTok at Butter No Parsnips. And if you like today's episode, consider giving us a five-star rating or review wherever you heard us. And And if you really like today's episode, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butternoparsnips. Donating $5 or more earns you a shout out either on social media or here on the podcast. So thanks so much to all of you. You help us make what we make. And with that, I've been Kyle Imperator. And I've been Emily Moyers. And this has been Butternoparsnips.